Hey guys, welcome to our first Tupi tutorial. This is Mr. Mascaro with you. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the basic functionality of Tupi. Uh, you guys had uh, taken a look at some of the uh, features uh, in, the first, uh, in the first online tutorial uh, that you had done that was put out by Tupi. Uh, but this time we're going to uh, kind of explore some of the space uh, regarding Tupi and uh, you know some of the tricks uh, that will make your life a little bit easier as you're putting animation together. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up Tupi, and we're going to create a new project. All right, so file, new project. All right, and I'm going to call this one, I guess we'll call it Cycle 3, and I'm going to call it Cycle 3 Demo. All right, and then you can put your name in there, description, you know, whatever, whatever other information you want to put in there is fine. All right, the presets are fine, 480. Uh, screen size at a uh, frame rate of 25 frames per second is fine. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click OK and get to our basic screen. All right, so our basic screen is here. Um, let me just explain a little bit about what's happening here. So we have this white rectangle and we have this gray area around it. All right, anything that we want to appear in our final animation, in other words, when we actually export and play this movie, Anything that we want to appear in that animation has to be on this white area. We call this white area the stage. Uh, the gray area around it um, is called a workspace. All right, so we can have uh, items uh, and pieces of items on that workspace, uh, but when we export uh, the 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 movie, all right, and we play that movie, that will not be seen in the final animation. All right, so just be aware that if you want something to appear, it has to be on the stage, on the white area here. All right, a couple of basic uh, navigation points. All right, so we have our basic tools over here. All right, anytime that there's a down arrow next to a tool, that means that there are un other tools uh, beneath it. All right, so we can see here that we have our rectangle tool but then we also have an ellipse tool and a line tool, all right, and down here, all right, when we talk about tweening and, and that sort of thing, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll explore those tools as well. Uh, over to the left, then, are the properties, color properties, brush size properties, uh, that sort of thing, all right, so we'll, we'll be taking a look at uh, some of those tools as well. Down here uh, underneath is, this is our frame number, okay? Uh, and then this is the basically the, just the zoom size on the stage. I like to make the stage as big as possible uh, so that I can work with it. All right, so, you know, size of 75, maybe 90%, you know, depending on, on your resolution um, will, uh, will help. All right, so, um, you know, you can go ahead and adjust that as you need, uh, as you see fit. All right, uh, over here on the right-hand side is our frames. All right, so remember that uh, when it comes to animation, one single picture does not make animation. All right, we need a series of pictures, uh, you know, uh, each one a little bit different than the one before it. And then they are played rapidly enough that the optical illusion of movement is created. All right, so this is where all our different frames are going to be. All right, um, and then we'll talk about the tools underneath the exposure sheet uh, in a moment. All right. There are two basic modes that we are going to deal with. All right. So if you click up here where it says frames mode, you'll see frames mode, static background mode, and dynamic background mode. All right. So right now we're going to be dealing with only these two, frames mode and static background mode. All right. Let me show you a quick demo of something that uh, I put together. All right. For uh, this project. All right. So this is an exported movie. All right, and basically it's uh, just a football, all right, uh, that's kind of rotating, and then it spins through and it lands, all right, on the other side. So we kick a field goal here, and the kick is good, and everyone's happy, and we win, all right? The thing to, to take a look at here, and these are the things that I want you to notice, all right, is that the football is the only thing that appears to be in motion. The field... The uh, goalposts, uh, my name, and the year are not in motion. All right, so when we take a look at animation, we have to understand 
well, what is it that we want to move and what is it that is going to be still? If an item is going to be still, more often than not, it's going to end up in our, uh, in our static background, all right? If we want an item to move, then we're going to need to put it uh, into our different frames. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the, uh, the static background. All right, so I'm just going to create very, very quickly uh, just a static background here. All right, so uh, I'm going to use the pencil. The pencil has uh, different brush properties. All right, so we can modify the thickness of the brush. All right, here, and you can see a preview of what it is. All right, uh, we can also figure out, you know, what. Do we want a solid line? Do we want dashed lines? Do we want dotted lines? Do we want something that looks like Morse code? That sort of thing. All right, so for right now, I just want uh, a solid line. All right, and then our color palette, right? So I can go ahead and create or, or display our color palette here. All right, so these are kind of preset colors uh, that we can block out, and then we can, you know, use like a color mixer down here if we want to. All right, so I'm just going to select a green color here, uh, and I'm going to... Uh, kind of move, you know, create a kind of a grassy area, all right? Now, I want you to notice that as I create that grassy area, okay, um, that I'm not staying inside of the lines, right? I'm spilling out over the, uh, over from the stage onto the workspace, all right? Very quickly, I'm going to show you this. If I go to player, Okay, uh, you can see that anything that I drew past the stage, all right, or onto the workspace is not visible in the final animation. All right, so sometimes it's a good idea to have, you know, things kind of spill out over the, um, the stage, all right, and then the, the outside, the frame of the player, all right, the video player will create those neat lines that you need, all right? We'll create that, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the outlines that you need, all right? We're going to go back to uh, animation, so click up here, okay? You can also change the color of your background, all right? So if you go to background here in this area, click on here, and now we can change the color of our background, all right? So if I want like a blue background or something like that, I can change that value, all right, that color value, and then basically the entire sheet of paper that I'm drawing on, all right, uh, turns that color, all right? So that's one of the things that we can do if I want, you know, like a blue sky or something like that, uh, then I'm good to go, all right? Uh, to select back, you know, for our, um, for our brush, make sure that the brush is selected, and then we can go back and just, you know, click on that green color for contour, and then we can keep, you know, kind of filling in the, the, dot, the, the area there. Okay, so I'm just going to create a, a very quick, kind of dirty, uh, you know, little grass there. All right. Uh, might as well go ahead and draw like a little sun or something. All right, so here again, all right, this is something that, you know, makes my life a little bit easier. I'm going to draw this sun, but it's going to be to the outside of the, you know, part, part of it is going to be outside of the stage, right? So we're going to go ahead and, you know, kind of fill in that area. All right, again, I'm not, you know, necessarily being extremely neat. I am drawing with a mouse. All right, and I am trying to speed up the process a little bit, but you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. All right, I'll draw some sun rays. Okay, and we're good there. All right, so again, if I go back to player and, and I preview it, you can see how the player has basically uh, cut off the areas that are outside of the stage. All right, and is only displaying the 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 parts of the animation that are on the stage, all right? Okay, so again, that's all done in static background mode. All right, and I can go ahead and add any other elements that I want uh, to my static background, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good with what I have for right now, all right? The next thing that I want to do is I want to start to create my, my animation, the thing that is going to be in motion, all right? So if I go back to frames mode, all right, my view changes, and you can you can 
close out this color palette, all right, because it, it does take up a lot of room, all right? Um, you can also adjust the size of your um, frames area over here if you have too much space, all right? So there's these little ellipses here, all right? And as you mouse over it, or this little sidebar here, and as you mouse over it, it kind of turns into that resizer, all right? So we can slide back and forth, all right, and make our, uh, our work area a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in. All right, to 100, and that way, right, I have a nice uh, larger piece of paper, okay? It's easier to draw big than it is to draw small, especially if you're uh, dealing with a mouse or with a trackpad or something like that. It's a lot easier to deal with that, uh, with a larger piece of paper. All right, so uh, I'm just going to kind of simulate now the football that I did before, right? The, in, in this animation, I'm not going to... Uh, draw a, you know, the goalposts and stuff like that. It's just going to be a football kind of, you know, flying through the sky. All right, so what we're going to do then is I'm going to create uh, first an ellipse, all right, and then I'm going to create my football, all right. So I'm going to go to the ellipse tool, all right. So again, I hit the down arrow next to the rectangle. I go to the ellipse tool, all right. I want to make sure that my colors are correct. So I'm going to go back to my color palette, and, you know, most footballs are brown, uh, this is not the XFL, so I'm going to select a brown color, all right? And you'll notice up here that my contour is a brown color, but then I don't have a fill color, all right? So when we're drawing shapes um, or we're using one of the drawing tools, we have an outline stroke um, contour color. The outside border is a specific color, and then we also have a fill color on the inside, okay? So uh, when I draw my football right now, if I was to just draw the ellipse, right, it would be brown on the outside, but nothing on the inside. I'm going to undo that. Command Z undoes the last action. Of course, we are working on Max here. All right. And then I'm going to go back, click on fill, and I'm going to select that same color. All right. Uh, so I want the outside of the football the, and the inside of the football uh, to be the same color. Now, Tupi is a little buggy here. All right, if, if the color, when I go to fill, if the color that, um, that I want is already selected, <coughs> excuse me, um, if I click on it, it's not going to fill in. All right, so what I want to do is I want to select another color and then go back and, fill the, and select the color that I want. All right, so just, it's just one of those things where um, just click on another color, all right, and then go back and click on the color that you want, and you should be ready to go. All right, once we're done with that, I can go ahead and, and minimize the color palette. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and draw my ellipse. And you'll see that as I draw my oval, all right, um, it is a solid brown color. Okay, so I'm going to draw to about the size that I want. All right, and then when I'm done with that, I can go ahead, deselect the uh, ellipse tool, and go back and, and select my brush. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to add some laces. So I'm going to go back um, to my pencil. Okay, uh, for the contour, I want to select a white color. All right, and then for the fill, I also want to select a white color. Okay, so again, minimize the, the uh, color palette there, and then I'm going to draw my laces. All right, so I just draw a white line. And a couple of laces there. All right, and we're good. All right, so there is my football. Now, the problem that I have, and, and uh, uh, one of the things that we have to understand is I drew my football, but every time that I draw something in Tupi, it creates a new object. All right, so if I use my object selection tool, my arrow here, okay, and I click on just the brown surface, all right, just the brown ellipse. If I was to modify or, or move that object, right, you can see that as I'm moving it, right, it's leaving the laces behind, all right, which is no good, all right. Generally, when a football moves, it takes its laces with it, all right. So what I want to do is with the selection tool selected, I want to drag a selection box around the whole football, Okay, and you can see that each one of these little green, the pairs of green dots is a separate object. I want to group all of those objects together. I want my football to behave as a single object. 
So what I'm going to do is once I have selected all of the individual drawings, right, that went into creating my football or all of the diff individual pencil strokes that went into creating my football, I'm going to go over here to the right to group and I'm going to click on the group objects tool. Okay, when I do that, you'll notice now that when I select my football, it is behaving now as one object. If I move my football, it all moves together, which is exactly what we want to do. All right, so I'm going to reposition my football in the first frame. Okay, and that's where I want my football to start. All right, if we go back and take a look at the demo, all right, so my football starts over here on the left-hand side, and then it's just going to follow kind of an arc um, path, and it's going to rotate a couple of times. All right, so we're going to simulate the kind of the same thing. All right, when I have an object selected, all right, um, I can rotate it, I can move it, um, I can resize it. So the green tr uh, bars around the selection tool when an object is selected, all right, they do a couple of things, all right. So this one right now, they're green, right? So if I click and drag on my football, I can make it, a, you know, larger, I can resize it, I can do all kinds of things, all right? Command-Z undoes the last action, all right? So that's, that's a helpful tool. All right, um, if I click on the center X in the center of the object, then I can move, drag the object around and reposition it wherever I want. Okay, so that's how that moves. All right, and then if I want to rotate, I double click on one of the green bars. All right, and then I can, whoop, I can rotate the object. All right, now one of the things, right, Tupi is a little buggy when it comes to rotation. Sometimes it makes the object too large, right? It, it, pops the object into this uh, kind of a, a bigger size, all right, which, you know, we don't always want, all right. So uh, after I rotate it, I probably have to resize it back to where it was, all right. Um, so we just have to be aware of that, uh, of that issue, okay. Now, I have my first scene, I have my first frame, I'm sorry, I have my first frame. I'm working in my first scene, uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a new picture of the football. I want the football to be exactly the same, and I want um, to then reposition the football in a slightly different location, right? Again, I'm going to create a series of pictures where the football is in a slightly different location every time, all right? Uh, in that first online tutorial that you guys had done, the written instructions had said to basically every time that you added a new frame, you had to redraw your object. All right, so uh, that gets a little tedious, and um, you know, some of us, especially me, are not the best ar artists in the world, and I don't want to have to redraw this football every time. It would be a heck of a lot easier if I could simply copy the, this picture right now. If I could copy the picture of the football where it is right now create a new frame, create a new picture, and then modify that new picture. Fortunately, that's what computers do for us, right? So this is kind of the, the power of animating uh, with a computer, all right? So what we want to do is, under here where it says exposure sheet, we have a couple of different options. We have an insert frame option. We have an extend frame option. We have a remove frame option, all right? If I click on insert frame, what that does is it adds a new blank frame, a new blank picture, okay? That's, I, I don't want to do that right now. What I do want to do is I want to click on extend frame. What extend frame does is it copies the current picture. Again, it's just the picture of the football, right? The background is there, but it's not part of what we're doing right now, okay? We're, we're dealing with the football by itself. I want to click on Extend Frame, and what that does is it copies the, the picture of the football, all right, and creates a new frame, okay? So, uh, so basically, I have a brand new picture here. You can see that in my uh, Scene 1 timeline. This is called a timeline, all right? I have Frame 1, and then I also have Frame 2, okay? I'm going to go over, and, I'm, and I know I'm in Frame 2 also because I can look down here. All right, so I can click on the football, 
and then I'm going to move the football slightly and to the right. Now you'll see that as the football moves, it leaves behind like a shadow. This is called onion skinning. The way I have onion skinning set up is I have five frames going backwards and I have five frames going forwards and I have the onion skin factor set to uh, 0 0.25, all right? So onion skinning, what it does is when I'm creating a path, right, uh, creating animation, the onion skinning shows me where that football or where that object was in the last five frames. Some people like to have this value set to 10, um, you know, and this value set to zero. Uh, so whatever, you know, however far in advance you want to look or f uh, far behind you want to look, you can see basically an outline of the path of the object, all right, and where it was in previous frames. All right, for me, five frames, looking five frames back, and if I'm looking at a, at a frame in the middle of a pack, all right, looking five frames forward is enough, okay? And I do want to keep this value. Uh, this is just basically how light or how dark that shadow is, all right? So I like to keep it relatively light um, so that I don't get confused with, you know, what, what, what's on the current frame, all right? So I moved my object a little bit. All right, I'm going to select a football again, and now I want to rotate it, right? So I'm going to double-click on the object, all right, on one of the drag bars. It turns orange, and I'm going to rotate this object slightly, all right? So my football is going to uh, move forwards, uh, maybe slightly up a little bit, and then rotate. Uh, and I'm going to rotate it in a counterclockwise fashion, all right? So this is now picture number two, right? If we go back to frame number one, Right, that's picture one, and this is the forward onion skinning, all right, here. And then if I click on frame number two, right, this is frame number two. So you can see that I have the football in two different positions, right? I have two pictures, the, the football is in, in two different positions. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm in frame two, and then I'm going to extend frame again. Again, I want to copy frame two, create frame three. All right, so when I first do that, frame three is an exact duplicate of frame two. All right, but now I can select my football again, move it slightly, okay? Double click on the uh, drag bars, all right, to get that rotation, all right, and then rotate my object, all right? So you can see now that I have three uh, pictures, all right? Here's picture number one, here's picture number two, here's picture number three. Okay, at any point, I can go back and uh, click on player and run my animation. All right, so I can see what I have. So you can see I have three frames, which is not a whole lot. It's 0 0.4 seconds. Uh, so it's just a tiny bit of movement there. All right, but you can see basically what's starting to happen, right? The football is starting to move and uh, forwards and up, and it's starting to rotate a little bit. I'm going to go back to animation. I'm going to do a couple more frames very quickly. Let me get out of this. All right, so we're going to click on the football again. Uh, we're going to extend frame first. Okay, click on the football, move it forwards and uh, slightly up. Double click on our uh, green bar. I'm going to rotate the object a little bit. Okay, extend frame again. Okay, move the object forwards in a little bit. All right, rotate it again. All right, I'm going to just do this for a couple of uh, a couple of times. All right, just so you guys see what's happening. All right, so you can see I'm just creating a series of pictures here. I'm going to do two more very quickly here, but you guys get the idea of what is what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. All right, and I'll do one more. So I'm going to finish up with a total of eight frames here, just for speed's sake. Obviously, I would continue to you know create the rest of the uh, anim you know the rest of the frames to get the football all the way across. Okay, so I have eight different frames. All right, again, I can go back to player and see what I've done. All right, when I click on it, you can see what it does, right? So it starts, it's starting to move and it's starting to rotate. All right, and, you know, we're in good shape here. So I would continue just to follow this, this track uh, with the football rotating uh, as it goes through. All right, so that's a, a, our basic um, 
functionality, right, uh, for Tupi. All right, so we looked at, uh, you know, the, the, some of the different areas of our uh, workspace. Um, we looked at the stage. We looked at the uh, work area. Uh, we looked at the, uh, some of the drawing tools. Uh, we looked at the color palette and the brush size. We looked at our layer control box over here. We looked at how to group things, and we looked at how to copy one frame and make another, a new frame out of it, right, by using extend frame. All right, so uh, that's our basic tutorial for uh, our cycle three. Um, what you guys will do is uh, take a look at Blackboard uh, for the project specs. Basically, it's going to be to create you know, a background and then some object in motion with some rotation uh, attached to it. But uh, uh, look on Blackboard for the specifics. All right, so uh, that's it for today. If uh, you guys have any questions, please come and see me. All right, uh, and uh, this is Mr. Mascaro signing off. Thanks.